I'm Eric Wielander, welcome to my channel. So as I record this, Apple just launched the Apple Vision Pro on Friday. And of course I got one on day one and I've had a little bit of time to check it out. And there are already some apps that are standing out to me as really good to use on Vision Pro. And I wanted to go through them here because it can give you a good idea of what Vision Pros like to use and what it's actually good for beyond just the magic tricks and big screen video. If you know this channel and you know how much I love Apple and smart home tech, it's no surprise that the home app is actually something I found very handy on Vision Pro. So of course you can use it to control any smart lighting in your home. Most of the time I just talk to Siri and it appears as this 3D orb right in front of you when you ask for it. And then as you trigger something in your smart home, then a confirmation little toast will pop up above the orb showing you what scene or accessories you just modified. Now you might have seen some people in the real world taking iPads and mounting them to the wall to be a smart home control. And with the home app, you can just keep it off to the side of wherever you're working and then have that quick dashboard of smart home controls right there. Next on my list is Juno. Now, chances are, if you're watching this, you like to watch YouTube videos and YouTube doesn't yet have an official app for Apple Vision Pro, either a built for Apple Vision Pro app or something they've ported from their iPad version. Now, Juno is a made for Apple Vision Pro app that supports YouTube and it's made by developer Christian Selig who previously made Apollo, the famous Reddit client, and it adds the Vision Pro style translucent backdrop to the YouTube interface you know and probably love. And you can make any video full screen and move it around your space to whatever makes sense, whether it's off to the side while you're working on something or right in center. And like a lot of Vision Pro video, you can then dim the whole ambiance around you. And so it will make the lights around you dim, not your actual lights in your smart home, but the view of them will be dimmer as you're looking looking at the video. So just a lot of nice little native touches for an app. Now this app does cost $5 upfront one time purchase. And so far in my experience, I think it's great quality and worth the money. Now, if you work on a Mac like me a lot, you might be used to having the menu bar at the top of your screen where you always have a clock visible. And in Vision Pro, you don't have that. So one app that I find very useful is the free widget smith. Apple Vision Pro doesn't technically support widgets in that way, at least just yet. But with widget smith, developer David Smith has added a way to sort of place widgets within your environment. So when you open widget smith, your various widgets appear. Now, like a lot of window management on Apple Vision Pro, you might have to long press the digital crown to get those windows to show up where you are if they were previously like another place in your home. But then it's just really easy to set up a nice looking clock and have it off to the side of your view so you can always check the time. And we could probably make a whole video on just the features in Widgetsmith, but I think that the clock is a very helpful feature to get you started. Next on my list is MindNode. I've been using MindNode for years to make a mind map of various complex things I'm trying to think about, whether it's like a big plan for something or maybe a complex, complicated video for YouTube that I'm trying to figure out where the topic lands. And so you can bring your mind maps into your virtual space and make them massive so you can look at all kinds of different details and quickly pan around from place to place and I find this is really great with a hardware keyboard so you can pair a Bluetooth keyboard to your Apple Vision Pro and then use the tab key the enter key and then you know the keyboard to just type in different ideas and move down the tree or back up the tree depending on where your thoughts are taking you now my notes also added this new brainstorm feature where you can add these bubbles of ideas around you and then sort of connect them together in clumps of ideas. And I think this is kind of cool. I don't know if I see this as being quite as useful for me as the traditional mind maps and just having those in Apple Vision Pro, but I like that the team is trying something new and maybe that could evolve into something I really use over time. Now my note is $25 a year, but I think well worth the subscription. Another diagramming app which Apple made not too long ago is Freeform. Now it's more diagramming than it is strictly mind mapping. So you're gonna be able to mind map way faster on MindNode, but if you're 
you're trying to make some kind of a multifaceted diagram, let's say to explain some system architecture if you work in technology or some other sort of complex series of ideas that interlink, I actually find Freeform to be a very helpful tool. It's not the most elaborate diagramming app, but of course on Apple Vision Pro, you can make your canvas for that absolutely massive. And it can be a really nice way to look at existing Freeform diagrams you have and maybe make some slight modifications change the name of something, add an arrow here or there. I don't know if I would go build an entire freeform diagram just in Apple Vision Pro, like I might see myself doing with a mind map in MindNode, but I found it very useful to look at some diagrams I've made on my Mac and then just see them nice and big in the context of other stuff I'm looking at on Apple Vision Pro. Now for writing for videos on my YouTube channel, my email newsletter, and all kinds of other stuff, I use Obsidian to organize my thoughts. It's a free note-taking app, and then there's a four-pay subscription you can have for syncing your notes with end-to-end -end encryption. And iPad app is here on Apple Vision Pro, and I've actually found it pretty useful. Now, it's not very good at giving you confirmation of what you're looking at. So that can be a little bit tricky, especially right when you get started using Vision Pro. Once you get the hang of doing the whole thing where you look and then pinch, then using something like Obsidian becomes a lot easier on Vision Pro, especially if you're already used to something like Obsidian's iPad app. Now, Graph View for me in Obsidian just wasn't loading, but everything else worked great. So I was able to edit this outline for this video as well as just browse other notes and click between links. Another thing that is maybe a little buggy right now in Obsidian is checking and unchecking to-do list items. So if you're big into using Obsidian for managing tasks, which I'm not, then that might be something to consider. But I imagine those little details will get sorted out soon enough. Now, Fantastical is what I use to manage my calendar. It is another app that requires a subscription, but I find the power tools of that very helpful, especially as I'm looking at my personal calendar, my work calendar, as well as commitments for this YouTube channel. And I can log into all those different Google Calendar accounts and see any kind of slice of my calendar and quickly add events, accept invites, just do everything you need for calendaring. And on Apple Vision Pro, it's really nice to be able to make this absolutely massive. So I can have a huge version of my calendar to look at lots of data. Let's say I'm looking at an entire quarter or even just a week big version, as well as on the flip side, making a small version of the calendar to have as a reference. Maybe as I'm doing something else right in front of me and I wanna quickly reference a calendar, it's right over on the side of me. Now a bonus round, which is a feature of Apple Vision Pro that I absolutely love, and that's the environments. Now you select a place and then you turn the digital crown to dial in whatever environment you want and how much of your area is covered by that immersive environment. And so if you go all the way, then you can't see anything but your hands. And that can be kind of hard if you're working with a hardware keyboard, you can't see it. But if you dial it back just a little bit, then you can see, let's say, a keyboard in front of you, maybe some other stuff, but everywhere else you look in front of you, you have this immersive environment. And it's not like being in that place. You can still tell in a lot of these cases that it's a photo, but it definitely tricks my brain into thinking that I went somewhere else. And as someone who works from home all the time and spends way too much time in this office doing work, it's really nice to be able to change up my environment and feel a little bit like I'm working somewhere else well, I'm actually still here. Now, this is actually an idea of a reason why I bought the Vision Pro, and I made a whole video outlining why I ultimately decided to drop all this money on this expensive headset. So that's linked somewhere here on the screen, as well as if you're thinking of upgrading your smart home in 2024, I recently made a video of some ideas there of what I think would be good tech to buy in smart home tech for 2024. Subscribe to my channel if you aren't already for more videos on Apple and smart home tech. Thanks again so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.